I am artist Michael Bernard Stevenson Jr. I am currently in the second year of a three-year master's program. Um, and a major part of my practice is direct uh, collaborations and co-authored projects with young people. And there's an arc in which that happens, so I'm going to like take you on a, a little journey. Um, this project is called uh, Playtime, uh, and I have a persona called the Urban Shaman, which I'm heard you've seen images of. And so I did this project um, with a friend, Stephanie Guerra from Alfred University. She curated me into a show called Show Motel, so essentially this is like a motel. And then I created this little workstation, and um, there was a format where young people would come up and they would fill out this order form. As you all fill out a form of your own, I'm kind of interested in like this participatory reflection experience where I'm like learning what they're interested in through a hard document. Um, unrelated to my work with young people, I have like a weird relationship with documents and signing things, and I collect all my receipts because essentially they're all records of where I am in space, and they tell a story. So I'm interested in that as well. Uh, and so I kind of like put that lens on working with young people. Like, what does it mean for a young person to submit to that kind of inquiry? Um, and there was another part of the form. Laser. Um, doesn't really work that good. It's over there. Nope, laser's not going to do anything. Um, although, it doesn't matter. This, this is the, the, so there was an entry form and then a contract. The contract was another layer of the project. Uh, a lot of the project was kind of like centering on the kind of cachet of objectness and kind of the wonder of transformation. Uh, but the form, um, the, the kind of the contract, the top clearly readable, my name is Brennan, I'm a young person, uh, by signing below I have agreed to be nice to my parent guardians. The other part, while young people are my primary audience, Parents are inevitably a secondary audience of that. And so I'm really interested in kind of encouraging them to be invested in, in young people's lives because that is essentially the only way we're going to prevent people from being shitty people in the future is by investing culturally and socially in them, which is a primary reason why I'm working with young people. Um, I redone, redid this project at a friend's space, this kind of low, low tier zone. There's like a, a platform above, and as you can see, it's about young person height. Um, it's called the Tiny Gallery. Uh, this space is inside of her studio space, and um, sh the space is primarily for projects centering young people or for exhibitions of young people's work, et cetera. Um, I did uh, more object generation with the young people president. Um, and this young man is named Ray. Uh, that is Emma Colburn. Uh, Ray's mother, and also uh, owner-operator of the Tiny Gallery. Um, essentially, Ray has become a very interesting person, young person collaborator, because I have, I've had continued interactions with Ray. And so an example of this, which you'll, it'll come up later, is I created this little Raphael character for him, uh, and very immediately became like his favorite object ever. And he wouldn't let it go. He was carrying it around. Um, and that was like a, a weird moment for me to see something that I had created be so impactful to someone's life. Um, this is days later in his home. Raphael's along for the ride. You know, this, this thing that I did with him that was momentary, maybe it took an hour or less. And now it's probably with him as I'm speaking. You know, so the, the work that I'm doing carries forward. That's something that I like, really was concerned about when I was making objects. You make an object, I shouldn't be touching the microphone, and you put it somewhere, and then people see it for about 35 seconds or less, and are they thinking about it? Does it matter to them? What's its purpose? Am I gonna sell it? Where do I store it? Like, I don't wanna answer any of these questions. I wanted the object to be cherished, and if it's not gonna be cherished, I'm not gonna generate it. Um, I did another series of projects with a young person named Elijah. Uh, my program, so Portland State University uh, has an art department. That art department has a studio practice program and an art and social practice program. I'm in the art and social practice program. That program has a program in a prison. Uh, we teach a conceptual art class and a comedy class there. And it also it has other things, but as it pertains to this slide, uh, KS MOCA, King School Museum of Contemporary Art, is essentially 
a social practice project inside of an actual public school. Um, and the public school has no art programming. It's like funding cut, like low, low access zone. And so KS, or KS Mocha as an entity operates of its own accord, but essentially exists as the art programming for that school. But by way of bringing in contemporary artists, exhibiting those contemporary artists' work in the school hallways, and then also affording one of the programs they have is a mentor program. So this was my mentee, Elijah. Uh, and the first thing we did was I had this remote packet, which never had its remote packet life in May in the future. It's all Sean's fault. Um, but essentially, it was, it was meant to kind of, similar to Friend Fight Club, like break the ice. Draw a dinosaur, that's accessible. Uh, how do you feel right now? He drew a rainbow, and I learned from this, essentially it was just like copying the clip art I put there, which is probably a bad idea. But I encouraged him to like think about it. It's like, all right, well, what's going on here? And in this one, I wish I had a laser printer, but you could see, or a uh, pointer, that like when I was talking to him, he's like, well, this is a gremlin, and he's got a pot of gold, and then I steal the gold, and then I trip him, and he falls. You know, it's like, He's working through his narrative through our, our working together, and that is like breaking the ice, getting him to unfold, getting him to think beyond a question, call, and response format, right? Which is really important. I want him to be a collaborator. I don't want him to just be sucking in my programming. I want him to be producing content. So this uh, favorite toy was one of the pages, and I, the, the packet was almost a ploy to uh, get a data data nugget for the next project. So I took uh, this Batman elevator, which he called when I was like, what is this? He's like, Batman elevator. I was like, you got to tell me more. I don't know what's going on here. And so that's when he drew Batman going up. And he's like, that's a joker. And then, and then he hops over, and stuff happens. And he's getting really excited about animating the drawing with his personality. But the, the experience of working on the packet created an opportunity for that to happen. Um, and so later, I did a drawing. I was like, okay, like, is this what you mean? There's like a dungeon in the basement, and there's an elevator. And he's like, yeah, but then the eyes light up, and it has wings. And I drew wings on top of his. He's essentially the yellow. I'm the, I'm the blue. Um, and then I did this larger plan. And then I essentially reproduced the object out of cardboard, uh, painted it. And um, it kind of imbued it with these very gentle, like, POC youth, and I took Passion. You know, it's funny because a, a peer of mine was like, well, what are you going to put on the screen? I was like, oh, it's going to be blank, but I'll use that space. Um, and it was also, like, functional. So the bottom zone had, a, like, an elevator, which is now here, and you could, like, pull it out and put, bring it up. And uh, I brought it to Elijah as a surprise, and then he proceeded to play with it. The bars were made out of pasta, so you could, like, break them. Uh, and then, like, this other boy, um, Solomon, was, like, being distracted from class. And, like, his teachers were like, I don't know, maybe this is an educational opportunity. So he had, like, a monitor, someone who was watching us. And I kind of just was talking to them and taking photos, obviously, uh, but letting them just kind of, like, play as a form of expression. But they were also, like, fighting the whole time. And I was like, all right, well, if this is a movie, like, POC youth unite to bring compassion to the world. Like, what does that mean? And so they, like, at the end, kind of had, like, a, a makeup session where Batman and Joker were chilling and his friends. Um, and then we exhibited the object, right? A lot of what social practice does is, like, okay, well, it's still art. Um, even though the process was non-traditional or non-common, uh, there's an opportunity to, like, exhibit the result or the process as the work. And so this is inside King Elementary School uh, and Elijah got to exhibit his work to his peers. Um, Elijah then was like really interested in drawing. And he was like, I want to draw DBZ. I was like, cool, you're inspiration. Like, let's do what you want to do. So I printed out these DBZ characters, and I taught him how to trace through the window. Um, he was also a big fan of Naruto, which was a classic when I was a kid. Um, and so I wanted to like bring them up. I was like, let's color these. Like, let's, let's finish these artworks. And he had this weird mode where he literally could not depart from what he had seen. He was like, you're coloring it wrong. I was like, why can't I color mine black? Like, what's wrong with that? And he's like, first of all, he thought I was peach. So that was amusing. Um, but, you know, there was this, this, what I was trying to show him is that he could manifest his own reality. 
And what I was learning is that he could only reproduce the reality that he had seen, or that was, that was where he was operating. Um, and so uh, I'm going to do an exhibition of his work at the um, Tiny Gallery, and it'll be, the show will be called Black, White, and Colored Drawings. And it will kind of suss out him as an artist and a maker, but also this stranger context where he was reluctant to see himself in his own creations. Um, we worked on a larger drawing uh, and applied to a show in a public library. Uh, it was rejected, and that made him sad. Uh, but I think irrelevant in that the show we have at the Tiny Gallery will actually be really, really interesting for him because the work is, is dynamite. Like, he's seven. Like, this is amazing work for a seven-year-old. Um, and, like, while we collaborated on the drawing and I helped to drive it, like, the content was totally his inspiration. Like, look at him go. I didn't draw that. That drawing is his drawing. Um, tracing is a form of drawing. Like, that is common practice in illustration, animation, etc. Um, he's just using a technique that I learned, taught him to make his own creation. Colored it, looking bomb. And I also, I think, yeah, I have this slide in here. So I want to get it framed up with images of the process. Uh, I forget what I thought the title would be, something about like process as product, because like, oh cool, there's a drawing and a kid did it. Yes, that's a cool thing, but what I'm actually interested in is that I spent hours of my own time building a relationship with him, teaching him skills, and empowering his imagination and self-confidence. That is the work. But if you just look at the drawing, you won't see it. And I wanted to make the process inseparable from the product here. Uh, and then these are some of his own drawings, totally unprovoked. And they're also amazing to me. Um, and so I want to exhibit, ooh, I want to exhibit his drawings um, with the drawings we did together to kind of help him understand that they're of, of equal quality. And because, just because it doesn't have fine lines or whatever, that it's not a lesser, lesser object. Um, I collaborate a lot. Um, I had a very gnarly beard. Um, me and Sean uh, bonded by, this is Sean 2, Sean 1 in the back. Um, we did this project called School of Magic. And uh, it consisted of this giant chest I got from an antique store. And I filled it with all these like cheap toys. And um, Sean has a very like uh, plant-based sculptural practice. Uh, and so he brought in all these sticks, and we said, we're going to teach you some magic today. And um, everyone went to the Enchanted Forest and uh, grabbed their wand, and then they went to the chest of treasures and grabbed themselves a talisman. And um, we kind of taught them to like synthesize the objects together. Boom, wands created. And uh, then we handed them their little spell books. And we said, OK, if you could cast a spell, what would it be? Super speed. What would you think when you're casting that spell? Shoes. And what would you say when you're going to cast the spell? He's going to say, Fast J. And so we had them all make their little spell books. And then they had this performative moment where they like cast their spell, like, mm, super speed. Um, and again, it's like confidence boosting. It's building their imagination. I provided the format. But the content was theirs. Their imagination was the center. And like, look how hyped they are. Best group photo I've ever been in. Genius. Um, another collaboration with Sean. Um, the Living School of Art, that's Amanda in the corner with the camera. Uh, she, Amanda, um, now it's recorded. I can't remember her last name. I'll remember. Um, she has a project in a like, low-income housing complex and essentially has created the living school of art inside of that. That is her project. They do youth projects of all kind. And one of the things they did is come to this place that Sean and I co-created called uh, Portland Tropical Gardens. Amanda Lee Evans um, is her name. And this was, so this is downtown Portland. And um, we essentially had this very interesting space that used to be a restaurant and we created it into this space that was a publicly accessible civic institution that was a tropical garden that was inspired by Ralph Bugai, who was the director, and he's from the Philippines. Um, and then that was an, there was many things that happened there, but one of the things that I was responsible for was deploying young people as a, 
interacting with the content there. So um, Ray goes to Helen Gordon School, which is a, a school that uses Reggio, Reggio Emilia uh, teaching pedagogies, which is like there's um, Montessori and Sam Smith, that's not a real one, but it's a guy's name. There's these different pet youth, youth pedagogies that imagine education th throughout, but a lot of them are, are more employed in like, like elementary education settings. Um, and so I also invited them into the space and they got to hang out and do some plan drawings, which was fun and cool. Um, something I'm really interested in, so I learned, there's a, there's a, a whole arm of my work that is about decentralizing the male gaze. Um, and I realized through that work that I'm also interested in this like really special audience of mother and child. Like young people are already an important audience to me. Uh, parents are like an inadvertent audience of that experience. But I'm really specifically interested in the, the bond between mother and child and creating content specifically for that. So. Um, I, this is a, a past collaborator, Sean uh, did a writing for a zine that I did with Trisha Smith, um, which is irrelevant so I won't describe that, but uh, we were collaborators and while I was visiting the DC metro area, I went to her house and um, cooked this brunch um, for her and her friends and their kids. Um, and I got a bunch of notes, so essentially that experience was like research pure research, like it was its own project to offer the brunch, but the benefit was just all of these notes that will inform my future practice. Um, this is a, a random slide in some respects. Um, it was a part of a much larger project that was at Artscape in Baltimore. Um, but it's like, I wish this person wasn't standing here, then I would only have this photo, but like this, is an interesting moment, again, Sean kind of like debriefed the value of documentation. Like this project was more about recycling, it was more about the sculptural object, it was performative in a larger sense, not everyone who was interacting with it was a kid. However, I do have like a ridiculous amount of photos of like young girls or people of color who are like hyped on recycling. Like that is like a powerful image. Also it's like, again, thinking about the Raphael toy that I gave to uh, Ray, like what is this girl thinking about recycling in the future? I don't know the answer, but we did make it a spectacle and like there's aspects of recycling that are damning. Like uh, is it even purposeful? I don't know the answer to that uh, in this frame. I could definitely have a longer conversation about it. But a lot of my approach essentially acknowledges that as a single individual or a person in time, I can't affect all the issues I'm concerned with. However, my approach is to engage young people and have them feeling imaginative and self-confident and ready to approach whatever challenges they are facing when they are adults, uh, and tweaking that with content. Um, a project that I'm super hyped on right now is uh, my friend from high school has a three-year-old son. His name is Johannes. Um, I saw him. We hit it off. I said, what's your favorite toy? He said, um, a spaceship. And so I said, you want to make a spaceship with me? And he was like, yeah. So I began to ideate this project um, where I essentially am going to make a scale replica of a space station that he can enter uh, and have a larger experience. Um, and so this is the sketch we did together. Where should this print this? No, it's not going to work. Um, so essentially there will be a space station that's attached to a volcano because the second time I saw him he was like super hyped on Mount St. Helens. So I was like, cool, do you want your space station to be attached to a volcano? He's like, duh. I was like, all right. And so the space station, or the spaceship will be inside the volcano and when it's time to blast out, it will blast out of the hole. And I was talking about this with someone recently and they're like, are you going to use lava for jet fuel? Boom, genius idea, definitely. Um, and so I just did more of these these like con just concept drawings, like I'm gonna be responsible for deploying content later. I don't feel like I need to prepare, but by preparing it helps me be like, offer that to be a richer and more generative experience. I was gonna visit him before I took the trip that I'm on right now, didn't have an opportunity. So what I did is I got large scale prints of these and then I mailed them to him. And uh, he kind of like, his parents got a video. I wish at some point this lecture will include his parents' video of him unboxing it. Apparently it was a, a cool, fun moment. But the amazing thing is the next day, he was like, mom, like, I gotta talk about the mission. He's like, is it gonna be safe? 
And it's like, yes, like, believe this. It's happening. You're going to space. It's going to be amazing. Uh, and essentially, I'll shoot a film of him interacting with it for the first time. So again, kind of like the Elijah drawing, there will be a thing that can be entered into the art world. Um, but the video will essentially be this record of an amazing and rich experience that a young person is having, where he's the main character. Like, I'm not in the video, but it has everything to do with that experience that he's having being palpably amazing by watching the, the documentation of that. Um, while thinking about it, it's like, OK, I have this idea. I'm already percolating on it. And I went to visit my friend. And um, I do a little quick, no, fuck it. The volume is good. It's a party. How, as an assessment, is it weird or not weird to have music playing while I'm doing this lecture? Great. Um, so I was visiting Maryland. A friend of mine has a kindergarten class. She's like, the theme is space. And I was like, whoa, I'm already thinking about sending three-year-olds to space. And uh, so I was like, cool. Like, she's like, I want a book nook. I was like, I will create this object, which I did. And um, I was like, oh, god, like, I don't have time to, to skin it, to like, make it look like a spaceship. And she's like, oh, it's OK. We'll paint it. And I was like, genius. I don't think the slide's there. It is. So I'm going to make more plans so that she can incorporate the plans in her curriculum. So it'll be a part of their coursework to build a spaceship in their classroom. And then I'm going to record, like I'll Skype in and be like, so I, 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 I can have it. Pew, 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 pew. So it's like when the spaceship's in the sky, like in, in the historic times, there wasn't like video communication. It was like weird analog stuff. So I was like, if you were you know, sending Johannes a message, right? And you're like, what are you seeing in space? And so I'm going to record them asking questions like, is there planets? And then I'm going to play those recordings when Johannes is in space. And it'll be like, yeah, I see planets. And so the video, they'll all be characters in this video. Uh, and we'll be able to do a screening of the video at their school. Um, this is more, this is not chronological, but um, more work with Elijah. I began a practice of uh, cooking food with him, because it's a major part of my practice, uh, which the presentation will move into. That made him really excited, um, and he also loved the taste. He did not like grapefruit juice. Um, he was like, I like any juice. So I was like, I will test you on that. Um, but he had a really great time, and uh, he was really hyped on the ability to kind of like share that experience out, uh, which food is an interesting medium. Like, it dissipates once consumed. It's way different than a drawing, but like, I think he was definitely happier serving a pancake than he was finishing that drawing. It was like a different kind of like final experience. Um, so we are now on to the uh, more uh, insert appropriate adjective mode, um, where you can see the more granular uh, as if you were there moment. So essentially, I'm taking the photos. You are now experiencing uh, my, my gaze uh, of this experience. So as you can observe and will observe as the video happens, is like I'm, my, my hands have camera in it. Literally every part of this experience, he's manipulating. I'm just coaching him through a process. While he was like flipping the pancake the first time, he was, literally, he was like shaking. He's like, I can't even believe I'm doing this. I was like, whoa, I'm, I'm doing something right right now. Um, so after we did our own pancakes, he made pancakes for uh, his teacher. He loved it. Uh, the next, it was funny, he didn't want me to take a picture of him eating this. I was like, come on, I just want to get like, a juxtaposition of what you are eating and what, we are, what, what our process is producing. So this, I think it's a banana square. Bananas are not square. Uh, it's, it's glutinous. Like, who knows what's going on there? But he was like, I want to make sausage. I was like, sausage it up. So I, was, I got all the ingredients. He's like, what's this? An onion? An onion? <laughs> um, and like, I had him read the spices. It was a little bit of like a reading exercise. I was like, we got to spice up the sausage. We got to get all the stuff, the brown sugar. We got to grind up the seeds. You got to crush the seeds. You got to pour the seeds in the mix. Get the nutmeg in there. Get the pepper. You got to mix it up. Chop up the parsley. Get the parsley in there. Chop up the garlic. Get the garlic in there. And then we had different kinds of meat. You had to mix up the meat. And then you add the spices, and then you make the patties, and you fry them up. And so like that, when, when, he, when we were doing this, he was like, I thought we were going to just 
make sausage. I was like, yeah, we did. And he's like, yeah, but you just like buy it and put it on the griddle. I was like, oh yeah, that, like this is what making sausage really is. So like getting them in touch with reality almost. It's like, I heard a thing a long time ago. It's like kids couldn't even tell what a potato was. They like eat french fries all the time. So part of it is like real basic education stuff. Like this is what a potato is. Um, but also like the process providing this kind of like experiential aspect. And then like he went around giving food to other people. And like, this is such a beautiful moment. So obviously it's like, mm, he's cheesing. But like the dude he w met in the inside, he was like, oh my God, Elijah, it was so good. And he literally was so ecstatic that it's like that person wasn't giving him compliments. He like couldn't hear it. He was like locked into the other zone. He just like couldn't handle it. Um, and then like, of course he was like, oh, I know you're teaching right now, but I would love to give you these sausages. Like, he was just so ecstatic about what he was doing. Um, I love it. And so we, we did a bunch more cooking projects. Um, for the sake of time, I did not include them in the slideshow. Uh, but it was like, this is my breakfast regimen. It's really healthy. He's like, what is this, drink breakfast? Like, this is all foreign to me. But now this seven-year-old who is living in, like, uh, a community that... Um, doesn't have an art program, I am coming in and providing these experiences for him, and I cannot claim certainty of what will occur in his understanding in the future. I'm only guessing that this has value to uh, a young mind. So I uh, love food, love food projects. Um, this is another project uh, where I was collaborating with young people, Riley and Beck. Um, to spare a really long story, I'm of mixed heritage. I've become really interested in working directly with mixed heritage youth. Uh, Johannes is also of mixed heritage. Uh, it begins to elucidate certain interesting concepts, like someone critiqued this work, is like, what does it mean to have people of color serving food to white art audience? So I was like, oh, weird. Like, as a mixed race person, I don't want you to tell me I can't cook food because I like it, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, I got this now. So we did a collaboration. Uh, it was in a larger project uh, called Assembly, for all intents and purposes, is like senior shows. Um, the project was called Real Food Faux Truck Food Truck. Um, and essentially, I featured them in the way I've started to list all my projects with young people is like, Riley Zahara Jacobson and Bake Anders Jacobson are the artists, assisted by me. I'm kind of riding the coattails of their imagination. Um, this other piece, which is harder to explain, essentially is a premise where like young people and their ideas are essentially marginalized in society. No one cares really what they're doing to, to a major deficit because the lack of care there is also producing like unhealthy teenagers and young adults and adults. Um, and so my practice is essentially features their content as valuable and this piece, Seeding Space, essentially like really makes that intentional, that I had a space in this art project and I gave it away to young people and let them kind of be the primary uh, consciousnesses behind Too Fast. Um, so I will also go through this much more quickly in the interest of time. Um, but essentially, I documented the process start to finish. And again, it's like, that cute photo of us standing in the front of the car is really cool. It's got some cool like art world cred, right? But this is much more interesting to me, um, watching them complete the process start to finish. This is why the music exists. I'm just gonna let you suck it in.